In this video, we're going to cover Beyond Trust Remote Support Product and how it supports Splunk integration using Remote Support's middleware server, sending events from Remote Support to Splunk. Here's what it looks like from an architecture perspective. You have your admins or your support reps logging into the Remote Support server over 443, your endpoint system send events up to the remote support server outbound 443. The remote support server then sends events to the remote support middleware server over 443. And then we have a custom port that I've defined within Splunk that's receiving those events from that middleware server. So first we're gonna go through the middleware install. You see here, it's just a standard Windows Server 2012. And we're just gonna open up this install here. After that's completed, we're going to want to open up File Explorer and browse to C Program Files, BombGar, BombGar Middleware Engine, and open up Plugins folder. And we're going to want to copy and paste this BombGar plugin here into that folder. And now that that's copied over, we're going to want to open up our services menu. And we're going to look for the Beyond Trust Middleware Engine service, and we're going to start that. Now that that's started, Open up your browser and go to 127.0.0.1 and note the port number here, 53231. And you should see this page right here where it's showing this Beyond Trust Remote Support SIM tool plugin. Now we'll come back and configure this middleware engine, but next I wanted to install the Splunk part. So here I have a latest release of Splunk for Windows Server. I'm just going to go through that install. The Splunk install does take a while to complete, but once it completes, you should see this launch Splunk launch browser with Splunk Enterprise. Go ahead and hit finish there. And it should open up a browser and take you to the local address 127.001 port 8000. And here's where you'll sign in with that username that you created on the install for Splunk. So now that we're in Splunk, the first thing I like to do is go to settings up at the top here and down to licensing. Now, since we are in a test trial demo environment, I'm just gonna change this license group to the free license and restart it. Once it restarts, go back to your settings and we're going to want to select data inputs. Once we're in the data inputs menu, now we're going to want to select HTTP event collector. And we're going to select new token. You can name this uh, whatever you choose to. 
just going to call it remote support middleware. And go ahead and hit next. Don't need to really do anything else. We will click this main index and it'll show up in here. Other than that, we're just going to hit review and submit. And after that, we're going to click back on this data inputs menu and go back into our HTTP event collector section. And we should now see that remote support middleware we created along with the token value. So now that we have this token value created, you see here there's this red exclamation mark at the top. We pretty much need to come and configure the global settings to enable all tokens, make sure enable SSL, and I've also set this custom port, if you remember from the architecture diagram, I'm using a custom port 18089. So now that we have that token, we're going to copy that out and open up a notepad or whatever text editor you prefer and paste that in there and just Splunk token, make a note of that. And now we're going to go want to log into our remote support appliance and the one I'm using I'm going to go all by IP address, and at the end, I'll show the certificate just for ease of configuration. It's at dot 100. I'm going to go ahead and sign into the slash login page, the administrative interface. And if you go to management, and there should be an API configuration button. You might have to click the, uh, the little dot, dot, dot as well. But once you're here, we're going to go ahead and add a new one. And we're going to call this remote support. And we're going to want to copy out the authentication key, client ID and secret in your notepad. There's my secret. Once you have those copied into your notepad, scroll down and check the box for allow access to support session reports and recordings. And you can add network restrictions if needed, but go ahead and hit save at the top. So now that we've saved that API configuration, we're going to go back to the middleware administration website, which should be on that local host that you installed it on, on port 53231. And we're going to go ahead and click this add new plugin configuration button. And here we're just going to call it Splunk 001. You can name it whatever you prefer. And for the appliance host name, I'm actually going to use the IP address of the remote support server that we were looking at earlier and creating that API key. And just right below, it's going to ask for that API key. Go ahead and copy and paste that in there for the ID as well as the secret. For API username and password, go ahead and leave that blank. We will check allow invalid certificates and non-TLS just for testing. We can, of course, come back and turn these off and, and, and provide the proper certificates. But for now, just for testing using IP addresses, we'll leave those disabled. We're going to want to check the box for outbound event types when a support session ends. And I'm going to keep scrolling down till we get to the target SIM system. And that's going to give you a drop down where you're going to want to select Splunk. You're going to want to put in the IP address of your Splunk server, which it is this local host, but I, the, the port is .89. And the port that we're using, if you remember, is that custom port in the architecture diagram and also that I modified in the global settings. 
when we were adding the Splunk HTTP event collector to 180.89. And for this syslog protocol, you're going to want to click that drop down and also select the Splunk option there. Continuing to scroll down to the very bottom of the page, there's going to be a section to enter your Splunk token that we generated earlier. Go ahead and copy and paste that in there. And go ahead and hit submit. And it's going to do it, have a pop up at the top saying save plugin configuration successfully. Go ahead and hit OK. So now you should see your instance that you created there. And if you click the lightning bolt icon in the middle, that'll test, send a test event, and hopefully you will see all successes. And that mean a test event was successfully sent to the Splunk appliance. And to check that, jumping back over to your Splunk website, which is on that local host on port 8000. If you click on Splunk Enterprise and Click on search and reporting. You can skip the tour. Go ahead and just enter a star or an asterisk there in um, the search and hit the search button. And you should see beyond trust sim events coming in as those test events. Going back to our beyond trust remote support. We're going to log back into the slash login console here, and there's an outbound event section we're going to have to configure. So once you're logged in, make sure you're on the management page and select outbound events. You're going to go ahead and hit add. And here's what it's going to look like. So you're going to make sure enables checked. You can name it whatever you want, but the URL is, is a very unique portion that you'll need to make identical. So make sure that IP address is matching the IP address of your remote support middleware server. And then port 8180 slash ERS post. Another very important thing is to make sure that only the support session N checkbox is checked and no other checkboxes in this events to send. Otherwise, it could cause a potential issue uh, this checkbox corresponds to the support session and checkbox that we selected in our middleware. All the other settings are fine for default. Go ahead and hit save there. And where it's getting that port, if you go back to your middleware administration tool and hit this edit middleware configuration, here you can see it's where it's getting that port 8180 for outbound events. And that corresponds to that outbound event here, port 8180. And that ERS post is in our documentation, but um, I've included it here in the video. So after hitting save, you should see a status OK for your outbound events. And to send events to our Splunk server, if you remember, we checked the box to send it as the support session ends. So we're going to need to create a support session. And I'll just do that going to my account page, launching the web rep console. And if you haven't deployed a jump client already, you'd need to deploy a jump client so you can access a system. But I have a system here that I'm just going to jump into this Windows 10 system. And I'll just start the screen sharing, file transfer, go through a couple of things here. And then I'm going to end that session, which will then send the events over to Splunk. Back at your Splunk Enterprise uh, search app, if you go ahead and hit star and then search again, you should now see events coming from that system you accessed. In my case, it was this dot 123. The session ended, and you can see that there is a lot of associative data that comes with these events. And so there we've successfully been able to configure the events that are being created in road support and send them over to Splunk securely.
now that events are coming into Splunk from remote support, we're able to add a remote support app into Splunk. So logging back into your Splunk localhost on port 8000, go ahead and click the Splunk app section on the Splunk Enterprise homepage. And you're going to search remote support. And you'll see the Beyond Trust Remote Support dashboard. Go ahead and hit install. It's going to ask you to log in with your Splunk username and password. If you don't have one, you can create one for free at Splunk.com. Once the Beyond Trust Remote Support dashboard Splunk app is installed, it's going to ask you to restart. You can go ahead and do that. And that's just going to restart the Splunk services on the Windows server, not the whole Windows server. Once the restart of Splunk services has finished, back at your Splunk homepage, go ahead and click the Beyond Trust Remote Support icon you see there on the left window pane. And if you were successfully able to send events, you should see a total number of sessions populated and any failed logins as well as um, session data. And there's also some additional graphs. Now, any um, additional queries or editing, this is just kind of a template. You can come in here and edit these as needed, uh, but this is really just kind of a starting point to get um, all those events in and make sure you are able to see them in a dashboard.